Let's take a look at one more application of image subtraction. This application is called background subtraction. The previous application of image subtraction that we looked at, which was color subtraction, only works when we know the color of the object that we're looking for. Background subtraction, on the other hand, works even when we don't necessarily know the color of the object we're trying to find. But background subtraction only works when the image is very stationary and when the object we are looking for enters or leaves the field of view. Let's learn how background subtraction works by writing some code to do it. Start by opening up the code that we had last time for color subtraction. Save this code as a new name, such as background subtraction, because we don't want to lose our color subtraction code, but we're going to keep some of the code the same. Now, in background subtraction, we just want to see what's new or different in the field of view. We could accomplish this by taking one picture, saving that picture as some variable, then waiting until a new object enters the field of view, then taking a new picture. We can subtract the old image from the new one, and that will leave us with a third image that shows us only what's different between the two images. So let's write some code to do this. The first thing we're going to change is instead of splitting up the image into its individual color components, we're going to convert the color image to grayscale using a built-in OpenCV function that's called CVTColor. CVTColor takes two inputs, the image that we want to convert and a call to an algorithm that tells how we want to convert the color. We're going to use color underscore BGR to gray to use OpenCV's built-in red, green, blue to grayscale conversion. This conversion doesn't split up the image into individual color components, but instead does the conversion in a way that tries to imitate the way the human eye perceives color. The next thing that we want inside this while loop is to show this image. Notice I'm calling this image gray image one. That's because we're going to have another image later called gray image two, and we want to subtract those two images. Right after we show the image, let's go immediately to the part of the code where we wait for the user to hit the escape key. After the user has hit the escape key, we'll still have this variable gray image one holding the image that from now on we'll refer to as the background image. Next, let's go right back into another while loop that captures images. We'll start here by doing the same thing we did before, converting the new images to grayscale, except this time we'll call the image gray image two. We'll display gray image two. Then we want to calculate the difference between this new gray image two and the old gray image one. Let's call this variable difference. We could start by setting difference equal to gray image one minus gray image two. But as we learned in the last video, this won't work quite right because these two images are unsigned 8-bit integers we better make them signed 16-bit integers so that we can deal with negative numbers if we have them. Next, let's make sure that we set each of these things as a matrix so that we can do matrix operations on them.
Lastly, I don't know whether the object I'm looking for is going to be brighter than the background or darker than the background. I could account for both possible situations by taking the absolute value of this difference. All right, now I still need to make the difference matrix be a valid image matrix. So let's say that difference, every element that's greater than 255 should be equal to 255. I don't have to put the other line here that says that every element less than zero should be set to zero because we've already set difference equal to the absolute value. So it will already all be positive or zero. Now let's convert the difference matrix into an unsigned 8-bit integer and show the difference matrix. Lastly, we have the code where we wait for the user to hit the escape key in order to get out of this while loop. Now, all of this stuff about calculating the column location of the object, let's put that after we get out of the second while loop. The image that we want to do this calculation on is actually the difference image. So we put difference here, and we also put difference here. Okay, let's test this. To test this, start by clearing the field of view of your camera of any objects. Then run this module. Here we see an image from the camera. It's grayscale, and it's not one particular color. It's just a grayscale conversion of the image. Now, when we hit Escape, the camera will capture the current image as the background image. So try to be very still. You don't want your camera to be bouncing around a lot. And make sure that there are no objects in its field of view, and then hit Escape. Now here you can see the foreground image, and this is the difference between those two images. You can see on my image that there are horizontal lines bouncing around. That's because my camera is a little bit shaky on the surface I have it sitting on. So if I shake the camera, the, the background changes a lot and we get all kinds of noise in the image. So if I hold still, and I place a new object into the field of view, here I place the red square. We can see just the red square. But notice how the red square has this grid pattern on it. That's because the image is showing everything that's different. Not only did the red square enter the field of view, but also the grid pattern under the red square disappeared from the field of view. And so I see both in the difference. Now, if I hit the escape key, our code should have calculated the column location, but I forgot to put in print column location. So let's type it into the shell here. Print column location. 345, that's a little bit past the center. That might be correct. Let's do another test here. So I'm going to add in print column location. I'll run the module. Hit escape so it captures a background image. This time I'll place the object far towards one side of the screen. So here the column position should be something like 600 or something like that. I'll hit escape. This doesn't seem to be very accurate. 
In order to explain why we're having some accuracy problems, I have to first point out a difference in terminology between the field of machine vision and common language. Way back when we had television shows that didn't have color, we might have referred to these television shows as black and white shows. In machine vision, these shows are really not black and white shows. They are grayscale shows. The term black and white actually refers to an image in which every pixel has only one bit. That bit can either be zero, meaning completely dark, or one, meaning completely bright. When we have our grayscale difference image that we look at in this background subtraction problem, it looks like the object we've placed is very bright and that the rest of the background is completely dark, but that isn't really true. All kinds of changes in light level in the room, small amounts of wiggling of the camera, and so on, cause small amounts of gray throughout the entire picture and those gray level pixels throw off our calculation of the location of the object. One way we could fix this would be to use a method known as thresholding to convert our image from a grayscale image to an actual black and white image. I'll show you how to do this. We'll start by creating a variable bw for black and white, and we'll start by setting it equal to the difference image. Except now, we want to pick some threshold level, and every pixel that is above that threshold level will be converted to the number 1, and every pixel that is below that threshold level will be converted to the number 0. Let's do it like this bw, every element where bw is greater than, we'll use 100 for our threshold here initially, will be equal to 1. Also, bw, every place where bw is less than or equal to 100, will be equal to 0. Note that it's important that you do these operations in this order. If you first check for everything over 100 and make it equal to 1, then all of those pixels will be caught by the second operation that looks for all of the pixels less than 100. So make sure that you first catch all the pixels that are less than or equal to 100, setting them equal to 0, and then check for all of the pixels that are above 100 and set them equal to 1. Now, here where we calculate our column location, Instead of doing it on difference, let's do it on BW. Also, I've moved this entire calculation up into the while loop, as well as the print column location up into the while loop, so that we can see the location real time as we move the object around. Let's try running this code. When you're ready and make sure that the background has no objects in it, hit the escape key. Now, there are no objects in view and the location of the object is being calculated as zero. Let's take an object and place it in view. Now, let's move the object far to one side of the screen. Here we get a very low value, indicating that the object is far to the left of the screen. And here we get a high value, close to 640, indicating that the object is close to the right of the screen. So our thresholding method to convert the image to a black and white image helped us very much by eliminating a lot of the medium gray pixels in the background that we didn't actually want to count. Now note that this position that's being shown here only tells us our x position. If we want to know where the object is up and down, we'll have to do this same calculation for the rows as we did for the columns. Also, 
Note that the units of this number being shown here is the unit pixels. The unit pixels is our camera's native unit. But if we want the location of the object to be useful for our robot, say for picking up an object, we're going to need to convert this number to units that are useful for the robot, in this case, centimeters. Also, the position of the object shown here is relative to the camera's zero position. The camera's zero position is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. If we want to find the location of an object that our robot can then pick up, we're also going to need to convert the location of the object into the frame of our manipulator. In the next set of videos, we'll be learning how to convert the position of an object from units of pixels to units of centimeters, and also how to convert from our camera coordinate system back down to our manipulator coordinate system.